Hello, and welcome back to The Complimentary, where I just talk about something I love. And today I'm talking about The Pridane Chronicles by Lloyd Alexander. You may recognize this title. Yes, the classic Disney film was an adaptation of this novel, the second of the five Pridane novels. There were quite a few of those, uh, as well as a sort of collection of stories, The Foundling. Love that art by the way. Um, so, I grew up with the Pride Dane Chronicles. They were books that my older brother owned and that I then read after that. Um, they originally came out, let me see if it says here, um, 1964 was the original release of these, I believe. And this looks like probably a 1964 uh, copy. Well, it, this paperback costs a buck fifty, so that gives you a hint as to you know how um, how long ago these these paperbacks were were out. So this is as you can get a sense of classic fantasy, classic hero's journey kind of fantasy. But what's different about it is that Lloyd Alexander he he wrote this primarily for kids, not really young kids, more like tweens. Um, and I mean that in the sense that they're, the, the novels are pretty short. I mean, you can see the, the thickness here and then the, the amount of text per page, not a lot. So the language is, you know, fairly straightforward. Taran gasped. For an instant, he could not believe such beauty concealed the evil of which he had been warned. Had Gwydion mistaken her? Nevertheless, he shut his lips tightly. Right, so it is somewhere between, say, a J.R.R. Tolkien and a more straightforward children's novel. It's not particularly um, hard to follow, so you can read it pretty easily. Um, and it's one of the things I like about it, is the kind of that easy readability of it. It is about a young man who learns to become a hero, basically. Pretty, pretty obvious there, but it's that journey he's on. What's great, one of the great things about Lloyd Alexander is this is very much steeped in Celtic myth. This feels like a character in old England in a way that is... So Tolkien loves the idea of civilization. He loves the idea of humanity building these uh, very civilized, structured societies. You know, the elves are kind of the, the ideal um, uh, people in, in, in Tolkien. Or maybe the hobbits, but that's because the hobbits also have this, this very homely life. And Lloyd Alexander is about an earlier age, an age where you live alone in the woods. And there are other people you are connected with, but it is a much more primitive existence in that sense. You're... You have to rely on yourself a lot. And there are dangers out there. The dangers of the Pridane Chronicles are not the um, moral and religious dangers of Tolkien. They are the dangers of the unknown. They're the dangers of those aspects of yourself you have not tested. They're dangers. They're psychological dangers in the sense that we all have things about ourselves that um, we prefer not to test, that we prefer not to think about. Um, and this is a, a, you know, very much about facing those elements and facing, in a, in a sense, the things we fear. Uh, the Horned King in this is absolutely just the summation of the fear of the unknown and the fear of the other in a lot of ways. And so... It's one of the nice things about the, the books is that you get a much more visceral experience than you get from, say, Lord of the Rings, which is a much more intellectual process. And that's something against Tolkien. They're trying for different things. Um, but Lloyd manages to grip you in, a, in, in the gut where Tolkien grips you in the head, right? <clears throat> Turan, the main character, um, is a lot more approachable for me than a lot of the characters in Lord of the Rings. Um, he's much more of a stand-in for myself 
than a lot of those other characters are. Um, I was with him. I, I, I was, went along with him. And in that tradition of, of something closer to an older epic fairy tale, you know, Tolkien is telling a grand epic story, um, whereas the Pridean Chronicles are a series of adventures that are that feel more hmm, hard to explain because you have the old legends that are very carefully constructed or feel carefully constructed because they were they were built over the course of time and different people. You know, reciting them and adding to them and, and tidying them up, if you will, over time in the, in the telling. And you have others that are um, more loose and that are more about throwing things at the reader um, to be exciting, to be adventurous. And Pridean is definitely in the latter category, which is not to say it is not thought out, but it is a different kind of approach to storytelling, where um, Alexander is not creating this big grand edifice and making sure that everything all ties into everything else into this nice, nice big bundle. His world is much more chaotic than that. And it's, it's one of the interesting things about it is that um, Tolkien, and I don't mean to turn this into a Tolkien versus Alexander thing, but you know, Tolkien is just very well known. Um, in a sense, Tolkien is always comparing everything to civilization, to order. And chaos is kind of the enemy to be kept at bay as long as possible. In Lloyd Alexander, everybody lives in the midst of chaos. Chaos exists. And you find order within that. You find home and food and you know, your routine. But you do not... Um, construct these giant walls around chaos and kind of leave it out. You learn to live with chaos. You learn to to respect chaos in a way the characters in Lord of the Rings really do not. Um, this is about the wilderness. This is about the other and how the other is often ultimately just another side of ourselves. Um, and it's a rollicking good adventure all the way through it. And one that's very, very easily readable. Like, like you, you heard, you know, you can read this for a time during the day. Turan believed they had at last outdistanced the cauldron born, basically zombies. But late that afternoon, the warriors reappeared from behind a distant fringe of trees. Against the westering sun, the long shadows of the horsemen reached across the hill slope toward the flatlands, where the small troop struggled onward. Easy to read. You know, you can just kind of um, chug at this and, uh, sorry, sorry, chug through this, really enjoy it, and get through a good chunk of material pretty darn quickly. There are five novels in the series, um, starting with The Book of Three and ending with The High King, which does absolutely go through a lot of time and material. And like I said, uh, the Foundling, a series of short stories filling in some of the gaps in the universe. So th these were some of my favorite fantasy novels growing up. Uh, they very much informed a lot of how I, I think fantasy and how I think fantasy can be, where um, it can be rougher, it can be more chaotic, it can be more, um, in a lot of senses, more laid back. You know, I think a lot of fantasy authors, especially modern fantasy authors, in the time of Tolkien, feel this pressure to create a crystalline structure of a world where everything is all interconnected. And Alexander says you don't have to be. The world isn't that way. You can tell a story about people doing things that encounter strange things. And you don't have to explain everything. Strange things are all around us. We live our lives encountering strange things that we can't necessarily understand and that can be part of the story too it doesn't have to be every part of the story this does have structure this does go from place to place and there are different factions in the world that are explained but it's not everything and it doesn't have to be so i love the pride and chronicles if you're looking for something especially if you have a 
um, a kid in your life who's looking to get into fantasy, this would be a great place to start. There are some scary moments, as you might expect. Uh, if you've seen the Disney film, even if you haven't just seen trailers, there are some dark moments in that film, and they're playing up some of the imagery in in the, the dark and I'm sorry, the Black Cauldron a little bit, where uh, the Black Cauldron is not necessarily quite that dark. The Disney film was kind of really trying to be dark and gritty, but this is this is really fun stuff. And again, um, fantasy that has stuck with me over the course of decades. So good on Lloyd Alexander. Um, I think these are, are really, um, they become iconic in, in my world. And um, just a, a, an impressive example of fantasy for a young, young audience that does, not speak te- that does not speak down to them, but tells them a, a big story about people that they can actually um, relate to and kick-ass female character to boot.